What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to the newest episode of It's a Rando, and we got a special guest here with us. Finally, so we've been waiting for this episode. <laughs> Llama Geddon. Look, that is our movie from way back when. So we actually have someone that worked on the movie here mm-hmm. with us. So you, you can go ahead, introduce yourself, let yeah. them know who you are, let them know what's up. <laughs> hey everyone, uh, I am Jacques MF, uh, aka James Cox. I um, co wrote, uh, starred in, and um, produced and did some art stuff for um, the unforgettable film Mom Again. <laughs> It really is unforgettable. Like, man. It, and it's 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 crazy because like we were like how do we come across uh, how we came across it was kind of was kind of funny because mm-hmm. we were just surfing through Amazon Prime for movies that we just, you know, just never seen. Like, like let's just try to watch something like we never will watch before. Right. And something that didn't take itself so seriously because yeah. we had just watched a slew of these movies like uh, what was it? Um, it was the new The Conjuring movie mm-hmm. and all of these oh. other horror movies that took mm-hmm. themselves so seriously. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, it's too much. You can tell that they're trying too hard. Find something that's more lighthearted. Mm-hmm. Mama Get mm-hmm. was the first thing we came across. Yeah. And I don't regret <laughs> well, it. I yeah. do not regret it at all. Mama <laughs> Get and Killer Sofa. Yeah, Mama Get, the Killer Sofa. Just crazy stuff. Yeah. That, that, what, what if. I'm sorry. Um, I was going to ask, if you don't mind me asking, what do you think about Killer Sofa? <laughs> have, well, you, have you heard of this before? You've seen it? Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. I could just say, th- th- I know the, the movie didn't take itself seriously, but it I, I it was it was hilarious. Didn't <laughs> just like, like a spring suffocate somebody and like drag yeah, the body he was, the, out? Yeah, the sofa <laughs> was walking on the the two wooden legs, throwing people off rooftops, looking <laughs> at people menacingly <laughs> from the corner. I'm just like, this is amazing. <laughs> like, just loved it. It it really was. For whatever reason, movies like this are more easy to watch and just mm-hmm. delve deep into, especially like when, when you, you got a bottle of alcohol sitting around. It makes oh, it yeah. so fun. Mm-hmm. It makes it fun, like, cause Llama Geddon, when we when we seen that, cause we, 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 cause the first time, like when we watched it, we watched the first like 25 minutes of it. And then cause, cause we fell asleep. Cause we, <laughs> we have, we have a slew of kids here. We have four kids mm-hmm. and you know, they just tired us out. So we, mm-hmm. we finally got a chance to sit down and watch fell asleep then you know he was like we got to finish that movie from last night I'm like okay so we went went back laid down watched the movie we, we were just dying man <laughs> it was absolutely hilarious and like it's the reason why now we're like like into movies like velocipaster the killer sofa oh. sharknado you know like mm-hmm. llamageddon was the sole reason for us getting into movies oh. like this it really yeah. was so we appreciate you for creating this or helping to create it you know and giving <laughs> us this So what inspired you to do this film from the start? So where did the concept of it come from? Yeah, so um, I've always really been into, um, uh, for lack of a better um, name, bad films. Um, Mm. It's these kind of like um, low budget films that somebody just really wants to make something. And um, like you're saying, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, and oftentimes they're kind of like these, uh, like community or like movies you'd watch with like some friends, right? Like when you mentioned like a bottle of alcohol, it's like, that's like the perfect way to watch a lot of these movies because mm-hmm. it's more of like a group activity. Um, so I had already been dabbling in, um, making some various things and writing some scripts. Um, and then the director and co-writer, um, found this shirt that I think it said, um, it, it was a Alpacalypse shirt. <laughs> and it doesn't, that, that movie doesn't exist yet. But um, in the very bottom of the shirt, it said, from the creators of Lamageddon. And he's like, I want us to be those people. So oh, we went ahead and we made the thing in the corner of the shirt, um, you know, uh, to make to make that first one. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, 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 that's kind of what spurred it. But um before that, we had made a short um, that I'm still trying to edit called Unitar, mm. which is uh, about inverse centaurs. So it's people that are half horse up and then they're shooting everything else. Um, and I can't, there's probably a couple other little things that we try to make, um, but this was 
uh, for better or worse, like the first thing that we publicly put out. <laughs> um, and there kind of came a point when we were just like, you know what, like, it's just time to release it. Like, we can't sit on this any longer <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, release it to the wild. Um, and super excited about um, how people have received it. But uh, the, the fact that you said that it brought you into um, that kind of film world uh, just makes you really excited. Because um, yeah. all those films I just absolutely love. So the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, we could be uh, mentioned alongside like Killer Sofa or Velocipaster just makes my day. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I like Velocipaster, but I like Lamageddon a lot better. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I Lama. liked it. It's, more, uh, it's memorable more to me. Yeah, it, like, yeah, it, was, it was great. But I, I like if I had to choose, I do like Lamageddon. I would like mm -hmm. Lamageddon better because Velocipaster was like, it, it was funny. But mm -hmm. it was kind of catching me off guard with with like some of the the scenes that they were doing, like like the whole stuff with the ninjas and <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> the car explosion the car, thing, was like the best, yeah, but like oh VFX. Oh, I oh, love that. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm like what? <laughs> and you never expected it, but y'all yeah. heard it here first. So Mama getting started with a T-shirt. <laughs> it started <Yeah>. there. <laughs> that, that's where the inspiration came from. That's how I got started. Um, so mm -hmm. mm. now that we've been playing around with like a lot of editing yeah. software and getting to know how to work stuff, how was the mm -hmm. editing done for Lama getting? Like, yeah. you know, if you can mm -hmm. tell us that. Yeah. So like for the movie, like how long, mm -hmm. and then like how long, like does it take for like movies and stuff like to render, like when in the editing process? Oh man. Um, so this film in particular, um, the editor and the director um sat down together i think with a bottle of jameson and they just like <laughs> went at it um that being said i think that was like the first cut uh -huh. um because as we were continuing to work on it like we had to go back and shoot some scenes like a summer later and you know there's a lot of extra stuff that went into it um i was kind of screening it and getting feedback um, that being said, I can't tell you how traditional of like a development process that is for a film. Mm -hmm. um, like in our case, we had a vision, we knew what we could accomplish. Um, one of the big things is that we knew we had access to a real llama. And because we were just graduating college, we knew a lot of people who were going to have, you know, some amount of time open as they were um, getting ready to, like, you know, um, settle into their new lives. Right. Uh, so those stars really aligned. Um, but for the editing itself, um, I think one of my favorite things is that there's actually a couple people, I think two, that did uh, the visual effects on it. Okay. So if you look at the llama's eyes, um, mm -hmm. I think at various points throughout the film, it has two <laughs> differing sets of red <laughs> eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Superman. <laughs> like, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's like it's, it changes and the way it tracks is just slightly different because um, it was like two different people going in and like, you know, adjusting it and putting it in place. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I know there was once, I think the beginning when, when the llama first showed up, like his mm -hmm. eyes were, yeah, the, the, they were yeah. different. And then when he shot the lasers out his eyes, they were kind of they were kind of different too. Shout out yeah, to yeah. <laughs> hashtag Louis the Llama. <laughs> yeah, always. And as far as um the casting choices, yes. you guys mm -hmm. all went to college together. How did how mm. did the casting come about for this? Uh, mostly, yeah. I think most of us went to college together. Um, there were some family friends that were brought in. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think. The, there was only one person who was a hired actor, and um, that was the cherry picker, uh, which I think is uh, pretty pretty great. Like mm -hmm. she did um, an amazing job. Um, but most of the people that were cast, it was kind of letting people go for the roles that they wanted to do or were comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, this is, um, I think what my brother refers to as a, um, a bro film oh, okay. where it's just kind of like, you know, a bunch of bros get together and they're like, let's make a film. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so it, it's, it's, it's very hard to kind of like, um, t tell people to do things like acting wise that they wouldn't already like want to do, um, you know, without like a much higher budget or something. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it all, it all worked out, you know? Yeah. But that's good because like having some friends that be down to do some stuff like right. that, like that, that's oh. super fun. Mm -hmm. like, I really think, um, the, 
Yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, no, 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 you're good, you're good. Okay, um, I was gonna say, like, I think the funniest part was, um, we didn't know who was gonna play, um, Floyd in the film. Mm. Um, and at that point in time, I had, like, gained a little bit of weight towards the end of college, and I had braces on, and then when we realized there was no one else, we just had this, like, oh, fuck, like, I guess I'm gonna play this character. <laughs> oh, man. So, with, like, Floyd, Floyd and, I forget, what was this, what was this, the sister's name? Uh, Mel. Mel? Uh, so was <laughs> she, was she, was she a college friend as well? Mm-hmm. Friend in college? Okay. Yeah. Cause that, that particular scene with, uh, with Floyd, we were, cause we were like with Floyd and, and Mel, we were like, man, so they're about to just leave them in this house. Oh uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, the mob, I'm like, I'm like, why is the mob just dropping them off like that? <laughs> like, like she... I, I swear I swear to God, I don't know how this happens, but for some reason when um you're trying to make a film with a low budget like this, for some reason, um it's like the weirdest things materialize. Mm -hmm. Like for some reason the car they get out of is like that really bizarre, you know, backdoor mm -hmm. oh, opening yeah. thing. Yeah. I don't know why it works out like that. Um like right 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 now I'm um <laughs> Are you guys okay? Yeah, yeah. something just fell Our over. Our kids' toys are falling <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, oh, no. it always, yeah, Jesus, it always happens. Of them. Uh, uh, no worries. Um, but uh, th there's a film I'm currently working on, and uh, we needed a cat for it. And, um, of course, um, the cat that we ended up using for the film, um, you know, no fault of its owner, is a rescue cat. Mm -hmm. But it's a cat that was missing its tail. And it's just one of these things where we didn't want a cat that was missing its tail. It's just that's what the cat that we happened to have for the project. True. And it's just, I don't know how that happens. But for some reason, when you're, um, you know, kind of like pulling things together, uh it's like you always get like the weirdest little like quirks mm -hmm. um and it's like all that for some reason like it makes the personality you know it's mm -hmm. not like super glossy it's like those bumps that actually like bring it together mm -hmm. oh yeah. wow so as far as like the music goes for like the film the original music can you elaborate mm -hmm. on it a little bit like uh, the song that was at the end of yeah the film. oh yeah oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Top notch right there <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be sure to let him know um that was uh one of my one of my brother's friends so he went to a different um college than uh the one that i attended okay uh but the guy that made the music is like uh God, I don't know, he's like a prodigy. Like, he's so good at the things that he's trying to do in terms of, like, just nailing the tone and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly think, like, Lamageddon Rap and then uh, Dan Changing Shirts, like, those are my two favorite parts of the film. Um, <laughs> Bro. Yeah. I was... That was the next... That was the next question that I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. That is probably my favorite thing in my entire movie. <laughs> it's well, so good. Dude every time the camera cut back to him he mm -hmm. had a different shirt on now like imagine this under the influence of a little bit of alcohol you literally think that you're just like am i tripping his shirt was just right. oh, red yeah, orange i'm like wait a second because one minute he came back in after the llama killed everybody in the 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 hot tub or the pool he came back in sat on the couch it cut back to the next scene it came back he had another whole shirt on and i'm like wait he just had, I'm like, I was like, right, I'm we tripping. even had to ask each other at one point, like, wait a second, that was just this color, right? Like, am I tripping or did you see that too? So, like, that yeah. was perfect. What made you guys <laughs> add that in? <laughs> <laughs> I, I it's it's really hard for me to say um where that idea originated but um i'm a uh, a game designer or like maker by trade mm -hmm. um so one of my favorite parts about these kinds of films like i was saying as like a community thing like people come together and like um you know watch along is i really like it like um have you seen the room for instance yeah mm -hmm. yes. okay um do you know like the various drinking games that kind of came out of it uh well like no like worries the, mm -hmm. like the like the like beer pong or so um there, there's various things throughout the room where people have like drinking games for it so it's like mm -hmm. every time the front door is open and closed like you take a drink um there's another one where it's like you drink every time it does like um a really slow pan of like the uh, golden gate bridge mm -hmm. um but it's like these these films have these little things that people like play along with that kind of mm -hmm. make it memorable and kind of like say people like wait a second did i see that mm -hmm. um so as soon as somebody like 
mentioned this uh, shirt thing, um, it was like, okay, we have to have that in there as kind of like a game. It's like something that people would watch and like mm -hmm. try to figure out like what's up with that. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I think my favorite part in relation to that is uh, Trent, the person that um, the llama spits on, <laughs> um, we, we actually have a scene explaining why his shirt changes, mm -hmm. which is like when he's in the bathroom and then um, his girlfriend throws his shirt into the toilet. So he has to like pick a new one out of the wash. And I just really like that because it's like, it would never explain Dan. <laughs> but then there's one other person who has one shirt change. It's like, we have something to make sure you know why it's switched. Right. Like dude, I that brings you. you back to like the um cartoons, too. yeah, like cartoon characters who never change their clothes, but when they oh, did, yeah. you never, when they did, like, wait, it, like, wait a second, you know, like Kim Possible, <laughs> the Proud Family, anything, like, no, where's oh, yeah. your signature outfit? You can't just change right. it. That's kind of <laughs> like when Kim Possible went to the later seasons, she started wearing different clothes. Yeah, yeah, I remember <laughs> like, that. I'm like, wait, oh really? Yeah. yeah. Cause it, it was it was an unmissable thing. Cause she used to, you mm -hmm. know, the cargo pants and you know the little shirt that she wears. And it's just like, wait a second, now what is this right. that you have on? Cause that's not the same. Yeah, and, <laughs> you by know? The, and by the time you get to the movie, she has a full like oh the blue like and a, white yeah, suit. blue and yeah. white suit. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> so, so you you just you mentioned that uh, you were in game developing, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like is there like is there any like similar things in, with making games and movies or are they're just two totally different like two totally different languages? well i can't i can't um really speak to you know major hollywood stuff um mm. but i guess from my experience um the the similarities kind of have to do with directing like the player or the audience's attention to like what you want right um you know games are at this point what like pretty much like interactive films like literally the the, the change of um the last of us to the tv show um my girlfriend and i just watched the first two episodes yesterday and i haven't played the game but she was pulling things out of the show saying oh this is just like the game and it's like i feel like the game was you know created to become a tv show it feels mm -hmm. like they almost said like hey here's a game it'd be cool if someone could turn this <laughs> right, into a show right. um but like uh i guess the kind of overlaps is it's like um you know you're, you're, you you have these narratives and you kind of have people go through it and there's always some kind of choice mm -hmm. but um you know even with a lot of games it's like it comes down to like oh there's a good and a bad ending and then the movie is just more or less you see the character pick that for themselves. So right. rather than the player deciding if they want to do the good or the bad thing, you see the character struggle with it, saying, I don't know if, you know, am I going to be a good guy? Am I going to be an anti-hero? Like, how's it going to turn out? Right. Um, but I also, like I said, I, I really like putting um, these little, like, playful game things in these films. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I always get really excited when um, I see somebody post about how they came up with um, a drinking game for Lamageddon, and it's, like, based off of one of these little things that we kind of hit around in it. <laughs> it's like yes like you it's almost it's almost like a hidden instruction manual right, right. it's it's these little um i guess nuggets right. <laughs> hidden throughout oh man so that's understandable and then um the movie itself is on amazon prime mm. do you have some sort of mm -hmm. a partnership with amazon where like all your future projects past projects will be released with them or how did that work out um, you can actually upload your film to Amazon. Um, it's it's been a long time. Um, oh gosh, when did that come out? I want to say like fifteen, fifteen, two thousand fifteen. Was it fifteen? Two thousand. So two thousand fifteen, we did um, a limited release. Like um, okay. I think we showed it in um, a theater in Ohio, mm -hmm. oh, okay. and um, it also won. Um, that's a fun story. Uh, it won audience choice at a uh, scum dance film festival oh, but, wow. um yeah i don't i don't think it went up on amazon until like 2017 or something okay um but regardless i don't know if you can still upload films independently like i think we might have made it in just at the end of that gate or i could just be completely out of my mind and anyone can still upload anything oh okay i get you oh wow so so with uploading it so if you could just upload it just free of choice like you don't have to like have a subscription or anything it's just oh you can just upload your film kind of like that 
I think so. I had to go back and check through it. Um, there's obviously there's like a lot of little things like you have to have the correct formatting and you know you have to have the timing correct and frame rate and um, there's a lot of little elements that go into it. But I'm pretty sure you're allowed to just um upload things. It probably has to be verified too. Okay. Like you know they're they're not gonna let just. <laughs> it, it's funny saying with Amp with uh, Lamageddon on there, but you know they're not gonna just let anything on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. True. So. For future pro projects going forward, would you like mm -hmm. to kind of stick with the genre closer to Lamageddon, or which is it different things you would want to dabble in? You know what I'm saying? Going forward, if you did any mm -hmm. other film projects, mm -hmm. yeah, um, it's kind of a combination. I think films like Lamageddon are really fun um, because you can make it. Uh, you know, it was obviously there's definitely stressful periods and you know like artistic differences and all this kind of stuff that goes right. into it but it ultimately was like a good memorable time mm -hmm. um but it was also very low budget um i think for me it really depends on like what the budget size is what the nature of the project is um like i have a couple silly films i want to make just mm -hmm. because you know it's, it's like these kind of um lack of a better word uh and i love them but you know very dumb ideas <laughs> that i want to make uh, but then also the catch is it's like, uh, it's much easier to make a short film, but, um, short films, I also don't really feel like get as much traction. Like mm -hmm. if Lamageddon was a short film, I don't know if we'd be even talking today, you know, mm -hmm. like, cause I don't, I don't know where it would be. People don't really kind of pay attention to short films in the same way. Yeah. Um, but at some point it would be nice to make a larger serious project. I think, um, the concern is that it has to be like better tuned. Mm -hmm. Um, it can't be quite as fast and loose. Um, and that kind of lends itself easier for something like Lamageddon. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're we're getting in like the little podcasting field now. So we mm -hmm. kind of stumbled across a podcast that you were on uh, right. called Secrets of a uh, Heritage House. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, yeah. So it was like a gothic horror type yeah. thing. So like, mm -hmm. is that? Would you describe that as different or like more similar to the physical acting? of like llama getting anything yeah. like that like is it a huge difference between the two yeah or is it like easier more like easier vocal than being there physically? right like on the camera and stuff i i think that was um uh, it feels weird to say but i think it was harder um oh, okay yeah so so they they reached out um because of llama getting and they uh wanted to know if i'd uh like to do um like a guest appearance in their um radio show and that, it was really fun it was like one evening of recording but um like when i watch lamageddon like i don't feel like the person on the screen is me like mm -hmm. even after i just we just finished filming it like you know because i was acting as a character and um maybe that's just like so that's different from person to person um but when i listen to the podcast it's like harder to differentiate um because it's like you hear your own voice but you don't have this like different character or different you know um i guess imagery to help separate it from your own reality okay so even though i can hear that it's supposed to be within this fictional world it's like oh that's my voice and oh god is that what i sound like when i'm <laughs> trying to pretend to be like crushed or something like that's not very convincing <laughs> oh yeah that, that's how you know? that's how we were when we first started uh because we we stream as well uh mm -hmm. that, that's how it was when we first started streaming uh because we were ca we were like ca camera shy so like we didn't mm -hmm. like to be on camera and everything like that but streaming helped with that and then like when we record and stuff now i'm like oh i'm i'm used to hearing my voice now mm -hmm. like, like at first it was the same thing yeah. hated the sound of my voice <laughs> oh same <laughs> I, like, I still like, do <laughs> looking at my hair i'm like is that what it really looks like you know so you start to realize a lot of stuff mm -hmm. about yourself that you normally wouldn't have you know, getting outside the box and mm -hmm. being on ca ca camera mm -hmm. and uh, recording your voice and things like that. So mm -hmm. I get you on that front. Yeah, um, there's um, this really interesting thing where it's like the idea that um, when you look in a mirror, you're almost seeing like the ideal version of what you think you look like. Right. 
um, which is already crazy because it's inversed, right? Like when you're looking at a mirror, everyone else is seeing like the opposite image of that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like when you're looking at a mirror, like typically it's like you're putting yourself together or you're doing things where it's like, this is how I want to be presented in the world. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as you step outside, like the lighting's different, the wind's blowing and it's cold. So your face is like, you know, you're getting like a little bit of a runny nose or something. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, it's just this really bizarre thing because I think we all have these like images in our head of like, this is what I really look and sound like. <laughs> Right. But then it's like, no one ever holds you to that standard, <laughs> yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, it's super bizarre, but yeah, I totally, I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of there. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have a big question for you. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm ready. We want to know if you can, if, 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 it's, if, if it's happening or not, mm -hmm. you can tell us, but will there be, will there be a sequel? <gasps> will there be a sequel? So, there will be a sequel. Um, I can't give you an exact time frame on anything, but uh, you know the the there is a road plan that at least involves uh, three movies, and that was from the beginning. That was always the plan. Um, oh. The the pandemic you know set everything back a little bit because mm -hmm. uh, people had kind of reevaluated and everything kind of shifted. Um, but there will be a sequel. I can say that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Get the alcohol, get the snack, get ready <laughs> right now get before ready. it comes out. Hold oh, on. Do y'all sell t-shirts? Cause I need, I need the website <laughs> link. Right, I'm trying to right. get prepared for this. We need the Lumber Gang mm -hmm. merch. We are ready. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and um, I guess uh, it, I wouldn't say it's like even a rumor or a hint because um, people have kind of come to us and we've already said like, yep, that's the plan. But um, the sequel will be named Alpacalypse. Oh, okay. oh, you're actually doing it. That's so perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, are you guys using the same the same uh, llama? Uh, I don't think Louie will be in Alpacalypse, okay. but um, give him a cameo. We offer yeah, well, I mean, it might be a cameo. Um, we are we are hoping for a comeback in the third film. Okay, okay. Man. You gotta slide him in there somewhere. He's important to this. Yeah. <laughs> so, any advice for us going forward with the whole podcasting thing, streaming, content, yeah, content creating, stuff like that? Um. Yeah, I mean, follow what you're passionate about, and I'm sorry that feels like a little bit of a cop out answer, but um. Oh. The main thing is just like making sure that you're interested in it because um, things will eventually kind of like slow down and you'll kind of wonder, um, not necessarily if it's worth it, but you know, you might have more interesting things that you want to do instead. Um, so you have to have enough like drive and passion for it that you can like carry it through that final stage. Okay. Absolutely. Um, it's like for Lamageddon, um, I did the uh, vast majority of, um, not the post-production for the film itself, but like um festival submissions uh any kind of like outlet um even if other people on the team were being interviewed i was usually the one that like set up those interviews um mm -hmm. what making the website um like we did a screening in new york um last year mm -hmm. um and all that stuff takes time and it's one of these things where sometimes it gets a little boring or trivial and you're kind of like oh god i don't want to do this anymore um but it's you know if you if you already made the thing um you might as well follow through like you already put it out there and right. you know it always feels great in the end because then you can celebrate it right oh, yeah true that is very true completely understand yeah. and this stuff is, can be get expensive too yeah. you know the mic oh, totally. the computers all mm -hmm. of that stuff you know and it does mm -hmm. take a lot of time it does yeah because when we first started streaming you know we went from zero then eventually we got about 90 about 90 people to come to our stream and then hey <laughs> yeah but we have to take a how long of a break yeah uh, like uh two three months two, three at months. one point because mm. we had a because we just had a, a baby a new baby mm -hmm. uh Aww. but when we came back it wasn't the same like that anymore for so it's like we kind of mm -hmm. had to work ourselves back up so we're like you know what, let's focus a little bit more on on the youtube side of things too you know not just mm -hmm. uh, you know not just twitch or just right. just streaming all the time and we're 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 sort of starting to see a little bit of progress for for like youtube mm -hmm. and everything but i know you know that's the, it's gonna come with time so yeah yeah it it just it always takes time um and yeah if you can stick to it then um like you've already experienced too 
um, you don't have to rebuild those habits as long as you figure out some way to just keep it going. But um, yeah, sometimes it's just impossible and you have to just adjust and jump back in when you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, the adjusting back to streaming, it wasn't too bad, you know, too bad. Mm -hmm. like, like when we came back, we had a, quite a few people there, you know, some that were there from before. But uh, one thing we, you know, try to, you know, well, not try that we do is like if people can't make the stream or watch our content, like we don't get, ups mm -hmm. you know, upset with nothing like that because, you know, everybody got lives, you know, mm -hmm. everybody has, you know, things that they have to do. So, like, if you can't make it or, you know, you can't watch it at the time, I mean, it's cool, you know, watch it when you yeah. can, <laughs> we get the free time because, like I said, everybody has their own things going on in life. So, mm hmm. And just always trying to remember why you started doing something in right. the first place yeah. is the yeah. most important mm -hmm. piece. Because once you lose sight of that, what do you have? You know, why yeah. are you still doing it True. at that point? <laughs> you know, so always keeping that in mind is super important too. You know, so you never lose yourself when you're doing what you're doing. So, mm -hmm. you know, thank you so yeah. much for sitting down and speaking with us. We right. do appreciate you taking the time out to do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. And um, yeah, thank you. Because that, that last thing you said too, um, I had some projects that I feel like I did exactly that. I kind of forgot why I just started doing them. <laughs> um, yeah so yeah th thank you for saying that and thanks for inviting me too oh yeah no problem man like it, if you want to come back on anytime you're welcome you're you're a, <laughs> you're, a, you're an honorary guest <laughs> yes that's all i've ever wanted <laughs> <laughs> right, thank awesome. you guys so much like mm -hmm. and go ahead and send us some llama getting merch yes, we can yes. use it yeah, <laughs> <Llamageddon merch. laughs> I'll, I'll keep you posted okay <laughs> yeah man but like yeah uh but again we want to thank you so much for for really you know doing this because you know take the time out of your schedule to you know do this interview and mm -hmm. stuff like that we really do appreciate it uh it was fun uh, i'm always excited to uh you know talk to people and hear their opinions and everything mm. <laughs> yeah all right well this has been raid rain and sapphire and i'm gonna just call you the creator of llama again you're, you're the creator. Co well, one of the creators. Okay. I don't want to. Yeah. I, I say co, -cre co, co, co creator. Co creator works. Yeah. Co creator. Yeah. Co creator. James Earl Cox <laughs> is in the building. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>